Welcome to our third edition of Dealer Download. My name is Andrew Rains, and I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of Automotive Mastermind. And on a monthly basis, I have the opportunity to speak with industry leaders and have them share with us their insights and wisdom. And this week, I have the privilege of speaking with Jim Wilkinson. Jim is the Sales Director with Fred Haas Toyota World down in Houston, Texas. Jim, welcome to Dealer Download. It's a pleasure being here and honored to be um, asked to participate. You know, Fred Haas uh, is a high volume dealer outside of Houston. You've been number one for many years in a row. You have been participating in our Dealer Advisory Council calls for the past six months. Jim, what have been one or two takeaways for you from those calls? One of the um, things that was most noticeable, and I actually talk about it in meetings and sometimes with some other friends and, and actually some friends that are not in the industry. And one of the things that I really liked was early on, we were very diverse. We're across the country and um, we were anticipating um, what was going to happen. And it was nice to be able to see a couple of things that happened. Uh, one, there were some stores, Florida, Camelback, that uh, had very similar circumstances to me. So it was like, okay, so we're not the only ones that are not on lockdown and so forth. And then you had the reverse of that. You had some people on the, each of the coast and what they were experiencing, early lockdowns and what their states and cities were starting to implement. And it gave us, me, some talking points to go back in our management team and our meetings and discuss, you know, hey, this is what's happening. This is what we're seeing. And maybe these are some things that we should anticipate. Um, I think that it's been helpful in that regard early on. And then as we've gone through, we've talked about how people have come back online or people have, you know, dealt with the, you know, the lack of resources, whether it's employees or inventory. So to hear those different stories and to be able to relate them to what we're dealing with here in Houston uh, has been very, very helpful to me. Yeah. And, and Jim, I just want to say thank you. Your uh, contribution has been instrumental not only to the team, and I've loved the collaboration of the team. I share your thoughts that uh, the insights have been great, but you also have given us uh, great direction and helped us navigate uh, unprecedented times. So thank you. Thank you. So, so during your uh, journey during COVID, what have you learned that will permanently change the way that you lead? Um, so, um, one, the experts have been mostly wrong, uh, <laughs> but that's a video for another day. So, um, but, um, you know, one of the things is that we, um, we chose not to participate in the negative. We, um, we can only control what we can control. And, um, we've tried to make the most of every opportunity. Um, those are the things that we, um, we think that will will be forever instilled in, you know, how we operate, who we are, and, um, and how we manage, um, you know, our business. Great processes, great decisions are made during difficult times. And, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, you guys have set yourself up for success going forward. So, Jim, you're a really, you know, strong and very well-respected leader. What do you attribute your leadership success to? Um, being poor. Uh, growing up, um, I'm a proud product of a, a single mother. Um, growing up in the '70s and navigating this world with a with a you know a son and uh, three kids actually, uh, um, I learned uh, very early on to be uh, very resourceful when there was uh, very limited resources. Um, I've carried that in every aspect and every uh, career you know any job that I've ever had. Uh, do more with less. Um, I, I do that. I practice that all the time. Uh, matter of fact, till this day, uh, my mother, um, and it's kind of crazy because I'm in a car business and I work at one of the largest dealerships in the nation, um, does not have a driver's license till this day. Mm. And uh, so when we were younger, we moved a lot uh, because my mom was very dependent on public transit. And uh, so we've always moved on the uh, bus lines or the bus routes. And um, over the course of that time, I went to about a dozen schools, but only one high school. And each time, um, there was, um, you know, a lesson to be learned. A lot of it had to do with uh, uh, adapt and overcome. And uh, so those lessons um, at an early age have, have stuck with me forever. Um, I, I believe in being much more resourceful than, than um, using the resources. So. 
Yeah, that's great. I, uh, one of the books I'm uh, reading right now is a book called Limitless. And in the book, it has a saying that says, adversity leads to advantage. And as I've thought about that saying, I really do believe that that's true. So, um, you know, you had some challenging, <laughs> yeah, you've had some challenging times, but that adversity that you faced is now, um, you know, as you said, contributing uh, tremendously to your success. So, you know, you're in a very, uh, you know, competitive environment. Uh, how do you challenge yourself on a daily, weekly basis? Um, well, um, one, we, uh, we practice certain disciplines. Um, one of the things is, is I believe in keeping score. Um, we, um, here at our, at our dealership, um, we only have one score, and that's being number one. Um, I was challenged um, or tasked early on when I was hired, and they said, you know, really only have two, um, two job duties. And um, the first one is you have to be number one every month, every year, every week, every weekend, and you have to be number one in everything, new cars, trucks. <clears throat> there's, no, uh, there's no second. And the second one was we have a very tenured staff. Your job is to keep them happy. And um, so keep the people that we have happy and be number one all the time. And uh, it worked. It's worked well for me, but I've always been one who liked to keep score. Um, I, um, so I, I, I keep scoring a lot of different things. I use those data points. And um, there's some things that, you know, over the past year or so, that I've decided to start sharing with others and I'm seeing some of those payoffs. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of great uh, motivation and uh, inspiration there. So, um, you know, that leads right into the next question, which is uh, you've taken a very aggressive approach to selling cars during the pandemic. You've maintained uh, and you've been very incredibly positive uh, over the past six months. How has that benefited uh, you now that we're starting to see some stability in the market? Well, um, just this Friday, I might be a little long-winded in this, but just this Friday, um, as we were dealing with a, uh, another possible hurricane of this past weekend, actually here in the Gulf too, um, I give an annual um, Katrina speech. I uh, didn't evacuate. I went through Katrina uh, growing up in New Orleans, living in New Orleans. Uh, I was in the car business at the time. And I, it always revolves around tomorrow may never come. Uh, it was a Friday. We all high-fived each other because we were closing a store for Saturday. We we're going to be off on Sunday. So we got a whole weekend. You know, we're going to have a big hurricane party and um, see you on the other side. And the other side never happened. Um, you know, it was weeks before we started to have any type of resemblance of, of, of a staff and dealership and so forth. And we we're very fortunate that the dealership was not affected, um, although for about a 70 mile radius, all of those were. I used that to speech this year. And, um, and added some differences to it. One, we had Harvey here three years ago at this dealership. And, um, and what we're dealing with right now in, in, um, with COVID. And um, I, I think that was a bigger message. And I always talk about that all of those teams and teams get stronger and people get stronger um, by the adversity of crisis. And every time I've gone through one of those crises, we've always come out stronger on the other side. And, um, and people are better off for it. And I know that always sounds kind of harsh, people are better off for it. But I really do believe that because I've seen people become better people. You know, they become better salespeople and they become better finance managers. And our managers become a little bit better managers. But the reality is they come become better people by going through the heat of that crisis. And that was my, um, that was my speech that I gave and I turned it a little bit because we're essential workers, you know? The in car industry, our staff, we were deemed essential workers. We've never been closed a day. Um, we had our challenges with, you know, whether it's, you know, illnesses, uh, staff felt quarantining, um, having a furlough because we didn't know what the business was. We went through a period where we had no customers. Then we had no employees. And then we had no inventory. And now, August, we're finally starting to get all of those things back. Customers are coming through the door. Inventory is starting to come through the back door. And, you know, and our staff is mostly back um, pretty staffed. So I have a, a little thing that's on my computer at my other desk. And I talk about all the time in our meetings is um, we choose not to participate in the negative. And uh, through these crises, we will become stronger. And uh, this year, more than ever, that, uh, that story and that, uh, 
that speech rang true to our, for our staff. Yeah, sounds like uh, an incredible speech and brings a couple of thoughts to mind. Number one, um, a book that I really enjoy, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Um, I, I shared the video with my team uh, a while back where whenever something happens, he says, respond with good. You know, so we're down staff, good. Um, you know, we're low on inventory, good. And how can you create something positive out of that? And that's exactly what you guys are living. And talking about making the team stronger um, and executing better, you and I have discussed that, you know, you've uh, been reading one of my favorite books, Four Disciplines of Execution. Uh, t tell me a little bit about what you've uh, thought about the book and, and how you would apply it to uh, your store. So I am um, I'm now in the second section of it. Um, I have done the first section um, two and a half times because a friend of mine started listening to it when I was in the, when she was in the car with me. So we started over again, even though I had already finished it. And, uh, and then I get distracted a little bit. But one of the things that was uh, at the forefront was, I mentioned before, I like to keep score. Um, I, I love to keep score. And um, so there was a little part of it that talked about that there was the coaches scoreboard and then there was the players scoreboard. And sometimes because I like to keep score, I have data on everything, but I don't always share it so much. Or I don't share the why of that, that, that I keep those scores. So look, through this book, I've decided to move that forward a little bit and start to share my, um, some of my data, the score that I keep and give them the why so that they can go out and do the how. And um, one of those things is, um, I don't know if you can see it back here, I'll bring it up front here. We have our Mastermind of the Month trophy. So this is a player's scoreboard, and um, it's kind of like a golf score, and we keep with uh, appointments, shows, um, activity, sold, of course. Um, and we, uh, we use that as our, as our reward for, um, for the uh, Mastermind person uh, and we call it the mastermind crown so that's the name of it so that's one of the things um, I believe in um, tracking or keeping score of the productivity and then the results will keep um, you know take care of themselves yeah that's great and and what we've learned at mastermind is that one of the great byproducts of keeping score is that it, it drives employee engagement because employees want to know are we winning are we losing what's the score and having that scoreboard allows them to become even more engaged. So that's fantastic. And then um, really excited about the trophy. Next time I'm in town, I'll uh, get my picture taken with it. So oh, uh, it was, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. And that's actually one of the things, you know, we, we do with social media plus, you know, my own personal, but at the end of each month, we always take, and, and talking about the, the, the employees, the sales staff, taking some ownership of it, of the scoreboard, they love to take the pictures when they win the, the truck champion, which is a which is like a championship belt, or the or the appointment champion, which is a telephone that I have on a, a pedestal, and I have a closing ratio, which is a uh, a Cadillac El Dorado, which is. Um, I remember that movie clip uh, well. <laughs> Second prize, steak knives. Yeah. Um, all right, great. Well, hey, uh, many of your peers from across the industry, across the country are gonna be watching uh, this dealer download. Uh, what advice do you have for them? You know, I have this um, picture of, um, you know, some people like it with, um, with the guy up in New England, but I use Sean Payton from the Saints. And um, it says, do your job. And at first, um, I used to be a little hesitant to, to hang that in the office because it seemed like it was, you know, just telling, do your job. Um, but the reality is when you, when you really look and you, you kind of layer, take those layers apart, what it means is if I do my job, then the next person can do their job and the next person can do their job. And, um, and that's, that's one of the things that we use here is that if everybody's doing their job, um, the job in general is uh, that much easier, stays positive, stays above board. Um, you know, we are just, the other one that the advice I give and, and I, and I, tell this to our staff all the time, is that be excited for every opportunity that you have. Every opportunity. I mean, in some ways, if you really think about it, people are risking their lives to come to work for your, these managers. 
people are risking their lives to get in their car and come through the front door, you know, with a mask on and, and, and the things that we're going through to buy a car. You should be overly excited that they did that for you. They showed up for you. So um, that's one of the things I do, just be overly excited about every opportunity. There's no opportunity too small, no opportunity too big. Be excited about all of them. Yeah, that's great and uh, very inspirational, Jim. Uh, thanks. So final question for you. Uh, for those that are watching and may have some interest in Automotive Mastermind, what has been your experience with Automotive Mastermind? I used to, um, I, I have had a great partnership with Automotive Mastermind. They've been uh, excellent for us. Um, early on, um, before Mastermind, uh, but early on in my, my car career, um, I used to be kind of a little bit on the smart ass side. And I used to always say uh, that, hey, when I um, was hired for this job, they didn't install a crystal ball on my desk. And uh, it was kind of a little quip that I used to give. And, um, but now I've been a part of several, because the company I worked for before, several launches with Mastermind and uh, four or five launches. And I couldn't imagine going into any new situation um, without Mastermind and the, the opportunity that it gives to us. And one of the things is, is that it gives me a little bit of a, I'd say an unfair advantage, um, you know, being able to use the predictive behavior, um, the scores, it kind of indicates um, for me, it gives me a little bit better odds on how to make an impact and be able to move that needle. Um, I don't need a lot of outside influences. It's the data that's all right there and the way that Mastermind parses it out it, um, it definitely works for me. If you go and take a look at what we've done, th done here through COVID, again, we're in a huge county, 7 million people. Um, we have a very extremely diverse market um, that loves cars. Houston loves cars. Um, and it takes a lot to keep this place churning. We have 450 employees. Um, you know, it takes a lot to make those uh, 10,000 ROs or that one to thousands at 1,200 units a month, um, month in and month out. We also took a little bit of a hit when it comes to oil at the beginning of this crisis. So we knew, you know, that we're going to have to really look at this, you know, between oil and COVID um, on a long range effect that this is going to have. This isn't just a ripple in our economy. This is going to create some waves and how are we going to be able to do it? Well, one of it is we've been very blessed with some tenured associates that have created a uh, raving fans. I don't know if you know that book, Raving Fans, but, you know, they did that before I got here. And uh, we have a very, very loyal uh, clientele because of that tenured associates. With Mastermind has been an, an incredible partner, especially through this time of crisis. It, it has allowed us to reach out to those most loyal of our fans, of our clientele. Um, and when traffic started to trickle, we just dug in and looked at our BPS scores. You know, when inventory fell out, we dug in to those BPS scores and, you know, we, we, we um, went by model. So we started looking, you know, what are the models that we need? You know, when the incentives got kind of tight or sketchy, um, we dug into the BPS scores and we started looking at series that had the best incentives and how we could impact that. Because one, we still had to be number one. One, we still had to feed families. One, it took, takes a lot of effort to keep this, you know, big monster Fred Haas Toyota world going each and every day. And Mastermind's been a great partner for us. And I couldn't imagine going anywhere or being here without having that. When I interviewed for this job, at the end of the, at the, end of the desk, they had the contract for Mastermind unsigned. And I asked, I don't mean to look in your desk, but are you planning on signing that? And I said, why? And I said, because if you hire me, I'm going to lobby you to please do so. And then we got into a discussion about Mastermind in the interview. Yeah, that's great. Well, I appreciate all that feedback, Jim. This has been a tremendous conversation. Uh, people watching this are going to gain tremendous uh, wisdom and insight from you. It's obvious to see why you guys are so successful and you've been number one for, you know, over a dozen years. So, Congratulations to your success. Uh, thank you for the partnership and uh, thank you for your time today. Andrew, I'm very honored. Thank you very much. And um, we're all going to make this on the other side uh, with thumbs up. Absolutely. Have a great day. Thank you.